and uh, now for guiding female tourists, um, Taliban don't have any problem. Discovered that had been under investigation since last visit. Um, he was told that there were many Afghans that made official reports against. How old are you? 16. 16. 16. 17. 17. Surprise! Yes, it's me. Finally, I am back. I'm finally making this video about just catch up and about mainly about Afghanistan, about why I left so quickly, because basically I fled overnight. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you about that coming up. It had nothing to do with the Taliban. It had nothing to do with anyone from Afghanistan. Completely different thing, and it, it was pretty shit. But I'll explain coming up. But I, I'm just going to run over a few things of um, Afghanistan. I want to, I get so many questions about Afghanistan. I have been trying to make this video for about two weeks. Uh, and I've tried it. This must be about my 10th time trying it. I am so bad at talking to the camera like this. I didn't realize how bad I was until I had to do this video. I can talk to this camera in front of a hundred people behind me at the airport, but like this, I find it really, really, really difficult. So bear with me. So I'm going to, um, I'm, I'm, I came home for Christmas to New York. I've been in Scotland because my mother, as some people know, she's sick. Uh, I'll be going back there. I made a quick trip to Mexico and I, have, I came back from Scotland via Iceland on a really budget airline, which I made a vlog on. I just, uh, it's been a stressful time anyway. I'd love to go back to Afghanistan, but apparently I'm not welcome. So we'll talk about that in a bit. I wrote some things down to help me, but I don't, uh, it's not going to help me. So I'm just going to have to try and do my best to rattle everything off. So I get so many questions, lots of questions. You know, I, I spent four months there. I spent two months the first time. And last year I spent two months in, I went by myself. I got my visa in Peshawar. I crossed, I took a taxi across Torkham land crossing border and I went by myself and then I just met people when I was there I had nothing planned nothing organized or anything so I um the number one question everybody asks me is safety do I feel safe there uh you know yes I felt safe people uh, you do not need a guide a guide is not mandatory you can go even for a solo female traveler you don't need a guide you can do independent travel if you want to it's completely up to you there's many ways of gu doing guides so so they have the international tour companies which charge a fortune I, I I can't even believe how much some of them charge one company charged is like for a 15 day tour it's four thousand five hundred dollars and that doesn't even include that's not even your flights to get there and everything it's just crazy and they offer visa support but you, you don't need visa support you you can do like i did and other one you just walk into the consulate in peshawar or something and you'll get your visa in half an hour it's very simple the visa process not not all countries but um, I mean, not all countries uh, give the visa so easily. If I was to make another video, video on this, uh, it would take an hour. I mean, if I was to talk about this in this video, the visa process, the permits, it would take another, it would take an hour. I'm happy to do another video on this if anybody wants me to, but I'm going to put some links in the description. There's uh, another solo traveler's blog, Diana, I'll link hers. It has, it's very detailed. We have a Facebook group, Afghanistan Travel Experience, and through that you can join a WhatsApp group, which is very active and it's, uh, it has some guides, local guides. It has travelers sharing their experiences, cheap hotels, people asking, you know, how do I get from A to B? What route did you take? Lots of advice and everything in there. So, and, and local guides. So that's sometimes people find that the best way to do it is, you know, you get to Kabul and then you'll make your own way to take, you know, you'll fly yourself to Herat or something and you'll meet a local guide there. If you do decide to use um, local guides and they, you want to spend two weeks with this local guide, make sure you have everything in writing. Uh, I can't tell you how important that is. Even if it's a text or anything, have it written down. 
it, this has happened a couple of times, uh, not just to me, uh, where a guide will give you a price and then you'll get back and they'll decide it, it's double. Uh, so make sure you have everything in writing and also what is included. So if you have a local guide, do you have to pay for their flight, their accommodation, their food? Um, in this daily rate because you might get a daily rate of 50 bucks but you'll have to pay for their flight their accommodation their food and everything while you're away for two weeks that's why a lot of people use local guides in different areas and travel by themselves some areas you can't really do that like for Panshir it would be it would have been kind of impossible for me to go there by myself because uh there's not much public transport and to get there so I went with Sultan there I spent two days in Panjshir I stayed overnight in a Chakana which is a very low budget accommodation because there was no hotels and when I had gone there hadn't been any other many other tourists there so they were really unfamiliar but safety I never felt unsafe anywhere I never felt threatened at all until I left but that's part of the reason I left uh, I felt safer walking around the streets of Kabul at night, you know, I would meet friends in a restaurant, a 15 minute walk away, I would walk by myself and I felt safer there than like walking in London, for example. Uh, I don't know what people think is going to happen to them when people think, say that I'm crazy for going there, um, I have a death wish for going there. I, uh, I, I don't get it. They must just be still listening to the Western media, what Western media is saying about Afghanistan. It is still number one on the world's most dangerous country list. I don't know why, because I've been places that feel more dodgy than Afghanistan. The security is super tight. The Taliban take tourists' safety and security super seriously. Uh, that's why you need permits when you get there you need permits for each province you get them in Kabul and then when you're in a province you'll get a permit you have to go to the Ministry of Culture in that province to let them know that you're there and uh, you'll get another permit for that province and it's all about your safety they want to make sure nothing happens to you and if you have any problems any issues at all with anything like any other country what would you do you would go to the police it's the same thing in Afghanistan the police are the Taliban so you would go to the Taliban and they will help you they are on your side they hate to see tourists being ripped off scammed or anything like that so they are on your side, been there, done it, They're, they will help you. People seem to, I don't know, I, just, I, it, I don't know, I don't know what people think is going to happen to them, especially Americans. Um, I mean, my passport is British, so if you're thinking of things like that, my passport's no, no different, you know. I think probably the worst moment for me was in, in Kandahar. Uh, sitting in a hotel room, uh, Taliban came in to check some other tourists. Uh, it was Bjorn from Norway. I'm sure, I don't know if people know him. He's a very well-known traveler. They came in to check his documents, him and his friends. And he just happened to look at my passport, the Taliban. And I have a British passport. Clearly, British passport. Um, he saw that and he said that his father was killed by a British bomb. And how did I feel about that? I honestly, I just wanted the ground to swallow me up. I was absolutely not expecting that and I was mortified. What do you see? I, I, I said I was very sorry. Uh, it's, uh, I don't have anything to do with my government decisions. I'm just a person. So uh, this is, governments and people are different, I, you know, and a lot of people have to remember that. I have nothing to do with my government's decisions, nothing. I can't stop them doing any shit things. And the same for everybody. We're just people on the ground. We don't have anything to do with our government decisions. And people on the ground in these war-torn countries specifically, even though it was Brits and NATO, America that did all this shit to them, the, the local people, they don't hold grudges. And it seems like nobody holds grudges to us tourists. They really don't. They still welcome you with open arms. They're so hospitable. The people in Afghanistan are the most hospitable people I have ever met in my life. I have never, ever experienced this before. 
Um, uh, Iraq also was like this, but Afghanistan, it's just completely on, an, on another level, you know. I would go to these, the rural areas, you know, we camped in Kunar by a village. They had never seen tourists ever. And we would go walking through this village and the whole village came out. Uh, and they helped us, the, the governor, oh, I call him the governor, the, the, the head of the village came at night and hooked up a, a, a lamp a light bulb to to the post to so that he could keep an eye on us because we weren't near a Taliban there was no Taliban around that when we first went up through Kunar the safest place uh, apparently for us to stay was next to a Taliban checkpoint notified the checkpoint asked if we could camp there and they said that it was fine and they, they would uh, look out for us not that there was anything to look out for but of, Occasionally, in some of these countries, you do get uh, other groups that want to uh, attack. I mean, all countries, there's always, these, there's always other militant groups that want to uh, cause damage. So that's what they're looking out for uh, when they're looking out for your safety and everything. But I never honestly felt in any danger in all the times. Even driving from Kabul all the way to Kandahar in the middle of nowhere, I never felt uh, threatened or worried at all at any time then. I really didn't. Um, so that's the number one thing is safety. Um, I get a lot of people saying it's it's my white privilege. It's white privilege. It's not white privilege. It's uh, I met tourists from Pakistan, Bangladesh, Canada, Europe, uh, Africa, China, Japan, everywhere, America, everywhere. And all tourists are treated the same. It does not matter where your passport's from. So it's not white privilege. I've, because they're not all white. I've seen a lot of these tourists look like local people, especially when they dress like a local. Even the women tourists, uh, they look like local women. Uh, the, everybody's treated the same as tourists. Every single tourist is treated the same. I always felt treated with respect. And uh, you'll find other tourists will say the same thing. Um, there is a tourist privilege, which exists in every country in the world. Tourists have certain um, privileges that other locals don't have. That's not uh, unusual, but that's not just in Afghanistan. That's in many, many other countries. So people can't, can't really say it's white privilege because it's not. Uh, look at black man, the traveler, Amir. He's not white. <laughs> Uh, so that's another thing that people say. People say I'm naive to go there. I have no idea uh, if anything happens to me, if I get kidnapped, my fellow countrymen will have to come and put their lives at risk to rescue me. But again, that goes to uh, these people obviously are just uh, reading Western media. Uh, not only did I meet many tourists from around the world this, this time, I met many, many Afghans that have returned back la uh, last year for the first time in years to visit their family so that happened a lot i met so many and many of them recognized me from my youtube videos so they would come up and tell me that's how i knew you know i, I met people from london uh, birmingham so many people from uh, germany a lot of people from germany many 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 uh, returning afghans a couple the first year but more so this year uh, also, uh, many people seem to think I walk around with bodyguards. I, I don't, or security, I don't. I never ever had a bodyguard. I've never had a bodyguard. I walk around by myself or with another tourist. The only time in Kabul I had Sultan. I met Sultan randomly in a restaurant when I was with Marius, the German. We met him randomly and he decided he wanted to be a guide. So we got him, got him his paperwork and he helped me. He took me to Panjshir, we would hang out. And he was my interpreter because he speaks Pashto. This is another thing you need to do. If you're having a local guide, make sure they speak Pashto. It's very important, especially if you're vlogging and you need uh, good translation and everything and you want to interact with the people. Many, and I would say like out of all the guides, I, most of the guides I've met, and I have met a lot of guides, they all say they speak Pashto. And I don't know this until I read the comments, like your comments in my uh, section, my comment section, that they have no clue how to speak Pashto. And I don't know that. When when they say they speak fluent Pashto, I believe them. So anyone, if it's re really important, make them do a test. I, 
find your hotel your hotel manager or something and have them do a, like a google translate test something in pashto so that you can know that they can communicate clearly in pashto because most of the taliban especially in the rural rural areas they like to communicate in pashto in uh where was i in nuristan it was a taliban commander came out on his motorbike and he's like what kind of guide is this he doesn't even speak my language that's when also when i found out that the guide uh, didn't speak Pashto. The Taliban told me, and I would have no idea. So I would advise anybody to d to give them a test. <laughs> In, in this village. Oh, this, oh, it's beautiful. I've never seen no, it. No, the people. Is, oh, the people, they just look. They they're are checking with you. They're, they're very curious. Uh, yeah, they're very curious. So just all coming around. It's, well, it's, it's very nice. I, I, I can speak uh, five languages language because, because oh. now I can't because my memory is weak. Oh, I'm not working uh, very well. Your English is is good. Uh, my English is good. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. It's From your uh, good idea. <laughs> Thank you. Shakur, I'm going to say that 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 This is a language uh, to. Uh, he is speaking it. This is not my language. You speak. What it, language you speak? My language is Pashto. Oh, Pashto. He is speaking Dari. I thought you don't speak Pashto? Persian. No. Persian. So when I go to a country, everybody wants, this is not just me, this happens to, people expect me to go there. Now, I upload my videos when I'm in the country because I like to be current. I up, upload my Instagram. So because locals will contact me, uh, give me advice, they want to meet me. Uh, so I upload while I'm in the country and I like to do that because I like to stay as current as I possibly can so that I can meet people. Uh, or get ideas from people or people invite me to visit places uh, most other youtubers i know they don't upload anything until they're long gone from the country but people expect me to be a journalist and report on the social issues of, of afghanistan and while afghanistan has issues uh, everybody knows about these issues everybody knows about the sad situation on girls' education. Girls need their education. Um, girls want their education. It's so important for girls to have their education. And I just hope that this will change. Uh, I know not all Taliban are against education for, the, for girls, um, but it's politics. And people think when I'm there that they tell me I should be reporting on this uh, topic when I'm there. I am there on a tourist visa. I'm just a tourist. I'm not a reporter. I'm not a journalist. I'm not there. I wouldn't in any country go to a country and report on a country's social issues while I'm there. And it's not my job. That's the job of a journalist. It's not the job of a tourist. And I see many tourists going there and it's kind of sad, you know, trying to show the positive sides of a country trying to show that it's safe to go to and it's an amazing country loads of uh loads to see lots of historical things uh, gorgeous scenery mountains lakes uh, valleys it's stunning country um but and people upload this and you get slammed for it i got death threats the first time i went i literally got death threats for going there as a woman and showing that it was fine and safe to walk around. It is safe for a tourist to walk around. I saw me there's many local women go around as normal. They travel around as normal. I'm not denying that it, they have issues there, but you, you, you don't know this. I had many people think it's okay for you, but the poor local women are locked up in home and they're not allowed to go out without uh, a male that's not the case at all and but you won't know that until you go there i can't go around videoing women all the time people ask asking my videos where are the women where are the women i made one video particular when i think it was my first one there i was just walking down the street a video in the in the morning there was hardly any people behind me if maybe a couple of men around and whatnot 
uh, it's not a place where women would have any real reason to be walking anyway but everybody's like it's such a shame there's no women around in the, the there are women around but just not at that particular time uh, I made other videos. I, I met some girls in Dutch to Barge, Dutch to Barge at an ice cream shop and they were happy to be in a video. But other vi women, they do not like to be photographed. They do not like to be videoed uh, and it's not allowed. So I'm not going to go chase women around with the camera when it's not allowed and the women hate it. It's disrespectful. It's not in the culture. It's the same in some areas in Pakistan, in Iraq, also uh, the more rural areas of these places. The, the women don't like to be photographed, especially not on social media. So this is, um, I saw women driving, uh, but nobody believes me. I drove and I said, local women can drive. They t call me a liar. Uh, Diana went, she, she got some horrific comments also for showing um, positive sites. We're not journalists, we're just tourists. Uh, a little bit better this year than last year with the heat. I didn't get so much hatred this year than I got last year. Last year probably because I was one of the first uh, female tourists to go there. I didn't get, I got so much hatred, but this year was a bit better. So the Taliban are different in every province. Now I've been to 11 provinces now, and I notice that they're different everywhere. Some are more uh, relaxed, some are more conservative, depends where you go. I went to one province and walked in, we were taken to a school, a school with uh, women, with girls in it. It was an all girls school with girls up to 17. So I was completely shocked at this. I could not believe it. I had made a vlog on it, but some guy from the uh, the UN that I met in my hotel, he told me not to upload it, even though the school head, the head of the school, uh, the, uh, the teachers wanted me to upload it because they desperately needed supplies like pens and books and everything. They have 700 girls in this school. Uh, some walked two hours to get there. There's a girls' school here, the boys' school's like miles away, and they have an agreement with the Taliban to allow education here. So that's just one province that I've been to and seen this. I don't know if it happens in other areas. I have no idea. I just know that it was allowed in this area. I'll put a clip in um, from my phone, I think I have a clip. Oh, a sea of green, look at you. How are you? I'm <laughs> fine, thank you. Oh, you speak English. Yes. Where did you learn English? Here? <laughs> yes. 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 Uh, do you learn English at school? Yes. Yes? Ah, oh, very good. Very good. How old are you? 16. 16. 17. 17. Uh, so, it's very much like a country of contradictions from what you see and hear. And the only way that you'll find these things out is if you actually go yourself and see these things. I am not being paid by the Taliban, uh, like many people seem to think, uh, that me, like uh, Amir, Black Man, and all these other YouTubers, people have these weird conspiracies that uh, we're being paid to uh, promote to Afghanistan and show that everything is okay. I have not showed everything is okay. I've been, I've been to uh, villages where they are extremely poor, but that they've been like that for years and years. Uh, that's really nothing, nothing new. Um, I've shown last, last first time I went, I went to a girls' school. Uh, no, it was a private English school, and the girls talked. I haven't not just showed everything's a hundred percent groovy because no country is a hundred percent groovy. They have. Uh, with the sanctions and everything, it, it's it's sad because these people have so much. You know, the these the carpets are stunning. You know, if you go there, buy some rugs, buy some carpets, uh, buy some jewelry, buy it, it has amazing, amazing for shopping. So take a, take an extra suitcase for shopping. I couldn't fit much in my backpack. Uh, been a year since my first visit and my second visit. There was a year exactly, and things already. Change. There's a lot. I saw a lot of improvements. You know, but even on the streets. The uh, first time I went, there was lots of drug addicts around. When I did that walk around Sharina, you can see it in what the video, the first video I did when I first went, and when I went this time, uh, there was no drug addicts on the street there. Uh, 
so there was differences and I because tourism is uh, becoming more popular there it's a little bit easier than it was the first time to it's worth it it's definitely worth it for for what you will see uh, also the nightlife the, the restaurants in uh, Kabul and other places they're amazing and I, I can't video these places because I, as a woman, go to the family section. Now, the family sections in these restaurants are the most, uh, are the hive of activity. They're all bustling. They're full of uh, kids, families, uh, women, uh, grandmothers, mothers, uh, grandfathers, fathers. So the family section, especially my favorite one, is the cafeteria. Uh, it, it has the it's like an oasis outside uh, with uh, trees and. Uh, birds, ducks walking around and everything, and kids and uh, water fountains and everything. That's my favorite restaurant. And within five minutes of any restaurant, uh, someone, will, a woman, some woman will come up to you and, and say hello and talk, ask where you're from. They'll want to take selfies. They'll invite you to their home for dinner. They'll invite you right there and then to come and be their guest. Uh, these, uh, if you go alone, don't feel bad going out to a restaurant on your own. Don't feel bad going out to a restaurant on your own, especially as a woman. Uh, the men that I was with, you know, like the male tourists or any male that I, we went out for dinner, they on their own would not be able to see um, all this activity and the, the women and everything unless they were with me because I'm a woman. They're not allowed into this family section. So the women sec the family section's all uh, fun. It's fun, whereas the male section is just a room just full of men. So no man <laughs> really they want they don't want to sit in that place, but they can't get into the family section unless they're with a uh, female. So and these are things I can't record. I can't take videos of all the women at, in a restaurant. I can't do that. So again, you have to go and see for yourself. That's another thing. So many, there's just so many things I, that I can't even, I, ha, I can't record because of the culture. It's just a culture of things. Uh, I just can't, I, there's so many things that you don't know unless you go there yourself and you see it for yourself. So yeah, it's hard to explain unless you go there for yourself and you'll see for yourself what it really is like instead of uh, judging uh, people from their Instagram posts and uh, YouTube videos and everything. Go, go for yourself and see for yourself and then you'll see the real Afghanistan uh, and the challenges that they face because they do face some challenges. Uh, and you'll see it for yourself. Oh, uh, female guides. So there are female guides. There are Somaya and Parisa, I think her name is, from Herat. So there are uh, two female guides that I know of. Now, I only know this, uh, they've only been doing it for a few months. She did not know that, she could, that there was such a thing as being a guide. She went to the Ministry of Culture. I'm looking up the message here. She went to the Ministry of Culture by, by herself in Herat and asked about being a guide. And they helped her. They had no problem with her being a guide. I, we, we were messaging back and forth. And uh, when, next time I go, I will definitely use her. And when people ask, when females ask me, I send them to her. Uh, I'm going to link her and her, her friend Paris, I think her name, uh, their Instagram below. They're allowed to take female tourists. Uh, she has her own car. She drives. She, again, like I said, she had no idea. And I asked her what, well, I'll play this message. And now for guiding female tourists, um, Taliban don't have any problem. And um, I myself didn't know about this, uh, generally about guiding until I went to the ministry and I was curious about it and tried to explain how um, how this works uh, they tried to help me and until now everything was good and I guided so many tourists in my province so um Somaya uh, it's blurry I'll put the, her, uh, her thing in the description and her friend also but uh, yeah she's working as a as a guide she, they're allowed to take uh, female tourists they're allowed to take a couple, a couple, uh, 
but with a male tourist, they need to have a male, I think she said a male family member, as far as that, I got that from uh, the, the other girl yesterday. Uh, I don't know, they had no idea this op opportunity existed for them, so now they're very happy, they're earning money, they're working, they're meeting, meeting tourists and everything. I don't know if any other females will do this in any other provinces, but it would be a really good idea because uh, as a female tourist, in areas like in Nuristan, for example, I wasn't able to interact with the women because the women hate men. No, I don't mean it like, I don't mean it like that. Uh, when a man comes around, the women run away. They hide from, the, from them. It, it actually looks like they don't really like uh, but that's their culture, and it's been like that for centuries. It's just how they are in Nuristan. Uh, a, a car will come past, and they'll hide their faces and turn their back. It's like they have a sixth sense for men. But when they're working in the valleys and everything, men are not welcome there because they're, you know, they're uh, planting crops, so they're squatting down and everything. Um, but as a woman, uh, I was able to go up to them washing clothes by the river, but I couldn't communicate with them because uh, they don't speak English and uh, I couldn't communicate. I couldn't ask my male guide to come with, to come because uh, they wouldn't communicate with, with him either. It's, that's their culture. So a female guide would have been super, super helpful. Uh, in situations like that. So if I, I'd love to go back to Nuristan again with a female guide this time. Now, I could go on and on and on, but I'm gonna go and tell you about what happened. I hate talking about this. Okay, so there was a man, a Western man, who tried to help. He got involved with something. Well, I had an issue. And he, oh no, let me start from the beginning. So it was really weird. So this is how, what, this is when everything started to go to shit, basically, for me. Uh, I, this man had come to my hotel a couple of times and left his phone number. Uh, the hotel guy had told me that, the, gave me a phone number, gave me a piece of paper and said to, to call this guy. I'm like, well, who is it? And at first he says, I don't know, you know. And then it happened a few times. He went to my hotel because I upload while I'm in the country. So I had uploaded where I was staying, even although I had gone away for a week, gone to Nuristan, I think. When I got back from Nuristan, he had come to my hotel again, looking for me to leave his phone number. And I just walked in at the time that he was there. And I came down, I'm not, I'm not kidding you, I came down like this. And I, I'm like, you know, who are you? And he's like, <gasps> he's like, don't come any closer. He says, I'm a Muslim. It was the most bizarre meeting I have ever had with anybody, ever. He says, you've no idea how, do you realize how bad this would be for me if anyone uh, saw, photographed us together? Everyone in the room was a Muslim. He's not the only Muslim there, but he, he, he was taking it to the extreme. So he, he befriended me at first. You know, I, I, I didn't know what his agenda was. Now I do. Uh, so we went, you know, he, he tried to help in something, which he did not help. He made things ten times worse, anyway. Then he, he would text, he wanted to go for coffee one day with me. It was um, another tourist also. He, but he wanted to go to the cafeteria, to the family section, because he hadn't been to the family section in a long time, in years, and he wanted to go there, but he can't go as a man, he can't go there alone, he has to be with me or another woman to go in to the family section. So we went, we met, we went into the family section, he had his coffee, uh, and then everything just went to shit, basically. Every video I uploaded, he would tell, complain about it, he would threat, he would, oh, it was so bad, I don't know where to begin. It all started with the Serena vlog. I had permission to go and make a vlog at Serena Hotel. I was allowed to do the garden area. I know what areas I was allowed to do. So as soon as that vlog uploaded, he went straight to the Serena Hotel to cause problems. And he texted me and told me I had to delete that vlog immediately, uh, that the manager there told he said, the manager told me to contact you to delete that vlog. Uh, I was causing an international incident with Pakistan. And it, it was really, it really w was stressful because these texts were nonstop coming in. And then 
I didn't just stop there. Then he wanted to meet me. He said we had to, some issues. We had to address some issues. I'll show you the texts. He said I had been under investigation for over a year. Since my last visit, I had been under investigation. He had been told. He had been told this right now. I don't know who would tell him, high up officials. I don't know what high up officials would tell him this and why they would tell him this. Uh, he said, I'm not welcome back into the country. He said, some uh, local, many local Afghans also have complained about me, made official complaints. His local Afghans had made conf official complaints about me that I'm just after fame and fortune. Uh, fortune. It doesn't even cover my, my travel costs at all. Uh, it, it doesn't. I'm, I don't get millions of views like other people. So then he got really childish and he sent me this text written by himself to make out that it was me writing this text saying that I am happy to act as a facilitator. I'll show you all these texts and I'm, you know, it was basically criticizing the government uh, and their how they are dealing with tourism, saying that they need to get their act together, uh, otherwise tourists won't come. And I, I'm reading this, I'm like, what? what? You know, I, I have no idea what he was talking about. And at the time, he'd already freaked me out, saying I was under investigation. I had, he, he'd heard from some top level, some top level government officials that I was under investigation, that they were very unhappy with me and he, he wanted to come to my hotel and address some issues. He, we had to talk about some issues. I had said, no, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Uh, please, please stay away from me. And I had warned people, anyone that follows me on Instagram will know what happened at the end. So yeah, he sent me this whole text, like it, like it was me right now. I don't know what his agenda was. The only thing I can think of is that you show someone a text on your phone and say, look, look what she wrote. That's the only thing I can think of, of that, the reason that he would have done that, something like that. But later on, like maybe a month or so ago, he used those words on his Twitter to say that they were my words. Um, you know, it's like, I, I can't even make this shit up, I swear. Uh, Emma Witters, known as Wandering Emma. On the surface, everything looks fine. But it's clear this vlogger is only after, here for freebies. Uh, fame and fortune. I didn't get any freebies in fame or fortune. Uh, but what he actually said, his words, I respect the Afghan government. I'm happy to serve as a facilitator. But I will tell you my experience. These are exactly the words that he had texted me. So he twisted these words around and posted this on his Twitter, saying that they were my words, criticizing the government. I would never do that. I never ever did that, ever. And I'm not the only vlogger he's attacked. He's attacked other vloggers also. But it, it was, um, did all these things, I'll show you. And then his last, he said he will pray for me. Oh. I don't know if you can see that. I will pray for you, Emma. And I'm like, what are you talking about? That all came from this one thing. He constantly harassed me. I had to tell the hotel managers that if he came around to say I was not staying there, that I wasn't there. Um, and basically I just checked out and got out of there as soon as possible because I didn't trust this man. He can't be trusted. He fabricates lies and I don't know what his agenda is. It seems that he attacks uh, anyone that's, I don't know if it's like a, a, an attention thing. I really don't know. I, I can say that like from walking around, when I walked around with him, I would get asked for a lot of selfies from local people and he, his nose was a bit put out of joint sometimes when that happens. But when he would walk around Kabul, I'm not kidding, this is how he walked. And someone he put it put his hand out like this, like you know, for people people to kiss his hand, basically. I think he walks around like he's the king, the king of Kabul. So this man is living there, and I'm not comfortable going back with him there. He has said publicly he slandered me on 
Twitter so many times saying that I don't respect the Afghan culture, I walk around without a hijab, um, that I, I think it's somewhere like visiting New York or Istanbul or Dubai, I have no idea. Yeah, basically, I'm one of those tourists who thinks it's like Dubai or New York or Istanbul and have no respect for the culture or, or anything like that. It's all on his Twitter. He publicly said it. He said, I lied, I stole from local people. I never did, I never did. He said, uh, I, I spread gossip about the, the, the government. I mean, why would he say that? I, to, why would he say these things to get me in trouble when I've done absolutely nothing wrong and these other tourists that have been there, these you, other YouTubers, they've also done nothing wrong and he's just, I don't know, I don't know how he's getting away with this. He's, he's getting away with publicly telling these people that they're not allowed back to Afghanistan. So that's what, it, that's where things stand. I don't know. I know he's, he tell, lies. So I don't know. And he's Australian. I mean, most people will know who I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to put this, the texts so that you can see for yourself. But that's the story of why I left. And I don't know if I'll go back again. He's living there and he's going to be living there. He said uh, he now works for the Department of Tourism. So if he's working for the Department of Tourism, all I can say is good luck to the Department of Tourism. Anyway, I'm happy to make another vlog after this with more details about uh, permits and visas and all that kind of stuff. But for now, I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna put the text, his texts and screenshots so that you can see those um, in between. I'll probably chop them up in between. All right, so that's it. I hope this is not too long and uh, I, uh, I'm not too like jip 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 all over the place with this. I tried my best and I will, I'm not sure what's next for me to be honest, I don't know. After, I've, nowhere will compare to Afghanistan. I love it so much. I would love to go back and stay there for an extended time. Like I'd love to stay six months there. I really would, I really love it. There's so much to explore and amazing people. So that's it, I hope everybody, I hope this wasn't too boring and I'm, and that's me explaining what happened. Uh, thanks to everybody that watched this to the end. And thanks to everybody that supported my trip to Afghanistan. I appreciate everybody's uh, support. And thank you to everyone in Afghanistan. I hope everyone has a great 2024. And inshallah, I will be back. So this is the one that was really weird. I respect the Afghan government. I'm happy to serve as a facilitator for tourists, but I will tell you my experience. The government seems overwhelmed and tense because um, sometimes you need a permit, sometimes not, blah, blah, blah. Travelers come into the country and don't get a stamp um, in their passport and think it's normal. I get checked and the Taliban looks at my Indian sticker visa. Uh, then the guys, so I don't even have an Indian, I've never been to India. You need to connect with, coordinate better with other. If word gets out among travelers, um, no more tourists will come. Blah, blah, blah. After your text against me, um, I was motivated to join the Department of Tourism. Um, uh, I'm just sorry you won't get to, um, a chance to see it. Um, I will pray for you, Emma. Um, there we go, and I, that's where I am. What are you talking about? I use people. So this is what was on his Twitter. I respect the Afghan government and I'm happy to serve as a facilitator for tourists. Um, this is exactly what I just uh, read, showed you the text of, but this was on his Twitter. Uh, Wandering M. On the surface, everything looks fine, but it's clear this vlogger is only here for freebies, fame, and fortune. She's upset quite a few high-level people. Let's see what she really thinks. Her words below. So this, you can see this guy is a complete liar. Crazy. So this was really weird to, after my attacks against him, he was motivated to, to join the Department of Tourism. Um, to improve it. Um, I'm just sorry that you won't get a chance to see it. Um, he'll pray for me. 
Um, let's see. Who did I? So he said, I slandered the Khyber Hotel. I love that hotel. I, I recommended that hotel to everybody. I left because I worn out my welcome like last year. I used people. Um, I hope you enjoyed yourself. He was contacted by the authorities and discovered that had been under investigation since last visit. Um, he was told that there were many Afghans had made official reports against me. Um, here, the visa issue, they will not issue one for me. I understand Afghans. Uh, he said, I lied and stole, used them, spread gossip and rumors about them. 